Hello and welcome to this introductory section for DataX. DataX is a formal course at the University of California, Berkeley. The topics of DataX are basically data science or machine learning and artificial intelligence, but it's really all presented from a applied point of view, or you might say from a systems point of view. Uh, I am Iklak Sidhu. I'm the lead instructor for DataX. I'm also the original creator of the course. Uh, let's get started. Uh, the goal here is really to tell you uh, what happens in this class. In other words, what is DataX? And if you spend some time in, with the topics in DataX, what is it that you are uh, going to learn? All right, so like I said, let's get started. So let's start with um, DataX. Uh, DataX is really shorthand for a more formal name um, for a course uh, in Berkeley. Uh, the formal name is Applied Data Science with Venture Applications. If you're taking the course on campus, uh, you would be taking it as IEOR 135 at the undergraduate level and IEOR 290 if you're taking it as a graduate student, which includes at the master's or PhD level. All right, now DataX is not only a course, but it's also a lab or a laboratory. Uh, it's a lab that exists within the Sitarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. And in the lab, we tend to work on very applied projects. Uh, many of them are industry connected projects or innovation related projects. And um, they are of course in the same areas as in data, machine learning, uh, and other emerging technology related topic areas. All right. Now, um, first thing I should tell you about resources or at least um, how to get started, I very much recommend taking a look at this uh, site. It's called data-x.blog. This is where many of the resources for DataX are already kept or held. Um, this particular video is um, located there, so it's possible that you've already been to the site. Uh, and if you haven't been there, what you would find is that all of the lectures, all of the slides, all of the code samples um, are there. Um, the code samples are actually on GitHub, but they are linked from this site. Uh, the syllabus to the Berkeley course is on this site as well. So are all of the projects, or at least most of the projects, that have been done over the past few years. Uh, and so you can go there and see lots of examples of what teams of students have worked on in the past uh, up till now. Another thing that's very useful on the site is that there's a lot of articles and readings. Some of them are from a more business or high level perspective. Many are technical references and more uh, detailed in terms of uh, implementation and tools and, and math theories and so forth. Um, finally, on the site, are even lists of mentors and people who've been involved with the projects and supporting the entire DataX uh, projects. All right, now um, let me say a few words now about what is in DataX. You know, what is DataX really made from? Um, what's in it if you take it or, or study it? Well, there's three components. Uh, the first component is that it includes or covers uh, the open source tools, that is the computer science tools, or you might call it the machine learning stack, that most people use, that is companies, startups, um, you know, uh, most people use when they're creating um, applications that have some sort of machine learning or statistical decision making built into them. A second component of what's in this course is fundamental math theory. Um, it's theory that is relevant to um, uh, the topic. 
it's relevant to the projects, and it's, it's actually quite well integrated and ordered in a very particular way, and we'll explain that um, a little bit later. And then the third component, and it's a very popular component, is that DataX has a very real-world, um, open-ended project. That is, uh, students or, um, uh, you know, basically students or people who are taking the course with an industry perspective, uh, they can um, propose to build just about anything that has to do with these topics, and they can work on that during the course of the semester. There's no artificial problems that are brought into the course. Whatever you see in real life, um, and there's a wide range of project types, uh, they're all okay to work on uh, as, as part of DataX. And, um, and I'll just re-emphasize this point, which is that you can work on it from a student point of view as just a learning perspective. Uh, you can work on it from a new venture point of view or from an application point of view. You can work on it from an industry project point of view. Uh, all versions of projects are fine and can be fit within the model of DataX. Okay, now uh, here's some examples of what people have worked on before. Um, you know, examples include uh, students who write uh, code and algorithm that detects fake news. Um, there's lots of types of prediction problems that people work on, whether that's predicting uh, future stock market prices or energy prices or even uh, who's going to win in some certain uh, sports game or basketball or horse racing or, or whatever. And um, there's um, uh, um, classification types of problems. They might be medical as in does someone need a knee surgery based on an input of a CAT scan or an MRI? Um, there's uh, another um, classification project, just as an example, is sorting of paper, plastic, and glass um, in, from a stream of pictures of garbage and automatically being able to kind of put that into the right bin. Um, there's really a wide range of projects that people have done before. And like I said, you could actually go to datax.blog and look on the project section and see many, many examples of what other people have done. And in fact, in many cases, you can see the, uh, the code samples also that they created. All right. So another thing that we should mention at this point is what happens if we don't teach a course the way that we teach this class? Well, one thing is, that it's possible that technical students are able to learn all of the different components. That is, they can learn the tools like the software, they could learn the math theory, or they could learn uh, you know, other parts of, of this topic, but they don't necessarily learn them in a holistic way or not integrated the way this course does it. And uh, the drawback of that is that people are not able to actually deliver their implementation. They're not actually able to make things. And so this course um, is designed to fix that problem and to let people learn it in this integrated way that leads to being able to actually build these things. Then from a um, related point of view, which is when people are working in organizations like in companies, in government, um, in research institutions, and they would, and, and the organization would like to be able to deliver innovation they need for these projects to go well. And that includes not only separate skills, but an integrated understanding of how you build and, and develop um, these types of uh, projects. So um, this course is designed to fix that as well, or in other words, to help at an organizational level as well. Okay. So um, another um, thing to mention, just to understand what the course is all about and, and how it works, is something on the course philosophy. So if you think of building these applications in parallel to um, you know, building a house or something like that, you could think of it like 
that most other computer science or math classes <clears throat> in topics like machine learning or AI or data are typically focused or put more time into the understanding of how you would make a tool. So for a house, that would be the equivalent of how do you make a hammer or how do you make a screwdriver? This course, Data X, is not focused there. And I don't wanna say that being able to build tools is not important. The fundamental understanding and the ability to make better and better tools in data science is, is a very important thing, and we need better tools all the time. But this, of course, is focused on a different topic. It's not about making the tools, it's about being able to use the tools to actually build what you're building, whether that's a house or a data science project. And it's about being able to architect a system. That is, what are all the components of it and how do they all come together? And then if you wanna take another type of course, you might be interested in why did you build that particular project or maybe how would you get financing or funding for that type of project? Again, um, those types of courses are often taught in business schools, or uh, sometimes, the, uh, or some of them are taught in the Sitarja Center, where this course is also uh, hosted from. But again, Data X is in between these two topics. It's not focused on the making the tools. It's not focused on the why did you build that particular application. It's in the middle, very much on implementation, how you use the tools, and how you architect the whole system to be able to do that function. Okay, now um, there's a lot of innovation that's actually built into the way the course is designed also. So um, one thing that's somewhat clever about the, the design of this is that the way the project works, for the first approximately five weeks, people are not actually writing code on the project. Um, instead, what's happening is, in the normal lecture portion, we are going through alternating sets of math theory or algorithms, and then computer science tools, and then math theory, and then computer science tools. So that's going on in the background. But on the project topic, uh, people are working on the insightful story basically a narrative or a, or a way to describe what it is that is going to be built in the second part of the course. And that is presented in a low-tech demo. That is, it's basically on slides, a little bit more pictorial and with words, definitely not with code. And it's designed to communicate and define what it is that you're gonna build through the rest of the course. And after you show that uh, in approximately the fifth week, then the remaining weeks, approximately eight of them, are used to uh, build, to iterate uh, in an agile way. So you've got about eight weeks to build and experiment and learn new topics that you might not even uh, know when you started that are needed to work on the project or really to also prioritize uh, what should be built and in which order, and basically understand the whole process of building, implementing, uh, and innovating all wrapped up or combined together. Uh, at the end, there is a demonstration day, and instead of a final, what you're going to do is you're gonna show that your project works, uh, you're gonna show running code, you can show the code itself, and, um, demonstrate that you actually did build uh, approximately what you said that you would build in the uh, low-tech demo um, that you presented earlier. All right. Now, um, just an, a couple of words also on project types. So I, I said this earlier, there's a lot of possibilities of what people can propose in this class in terms of projects. One type is that it's some sort of business or consumer use case. That means that if you think you could build something that another person could use, um, someone you know, yourself, uh, or 
Um, it could be that a business could use it. It could be even that a researcher or you're a researcher and you need a tool and uh, you want to build a tool that you, would help you in your research. All of those things are basically use cases. And if you basically think someone could use what you want to build, then that's great. Now, there's another category, which is what we would consider a social impact project. And that's really anything that helps society or helps people in general. It doesn't have necessarily a you know, value proposition in the same way. Even the first type, the business or consumer uh, use case, it's not intended to be a venture application. It doesn't have to have all the validation and it doesn't have to have all the characteristics of what would make a good venture. That's simply something that a person could use um, or a business could use. In the social impact case, that's something that would just basically be a good use of data or AI, ML uh, from a societal point of view. And then um, the third category, it's a very broad category, but if you can justify that something is just very interesting, um, it would be uh, worth the time to work on it, it would be neat or cool in some way, uh, you can propose that too and that's fine. One more comment on projects. Some people work on projects all the way through, that is from the part about scraping or getting data, um, organizing it in a certain format, and then using statistical algorithms to make decisions and, and causing actions to happen. It's all the way from beginning to end. But some projects, or for some teams, um, there's too much to do from the very beginning all the way to the end of that data pipeline. So other projects, they'll either pick the beginning part of that or they'll pick the end part of that. So in the beginning, they might say, our project is really to collect data and the output is a data set and, and the project ends at that point. And another team could um, say that we're assuming that a data set already exists and that in fact we found a data set and what we're gonna do is basically analyze it and or make decisions uh, based on this data set and they might are a little bit more application oriented. So you can either do the beginning part, which is collecting the data and making a good data set. You can use the, the later part, which is more application oriented, or you can do the whole thing. Um, all of those are fine from a uh, data X project point of view. So um, as a bit of a summary at this point, uh, well, let's uh, just talk about what's actually in this class. If I go one level deeper than the things that I was saying so far, um, the things that are in this class would be one, um, the machine learning stack, the same machine learning stack or open software tools that most companies or startups or you know, research labs or that anybody uses to build these types of applications. Uh, we're um, including that in this course. And then secondly, you know, I'll say that the course is from a systems point of view or an applications point of view, uh, and all designed to be very implementation oriented. Certainly, we're gonna look at how you construct things, how you build, and what's the architecture. We are okay with hybrid decision systems, so some of it can be rule-based, and some of the application can be statistically oriented. Uh, also in the class, we will cover mathematical foundations. Uh, it is not left out in the class, but it is structured or ordered in a way that the math foundations are integrated or connected properly with the project as the goal. Uh, we will cover some advanced techniques like uh, convolutional neural networks or natural language processing and, and you know other things like this. Um, and finally, the course is very much a um, systems level and we will uh, look at the, the modeling concepts related to uh, these applications. Okay, so with that, uh, hopefully you have a um, better understanding or a quick view into what happens in uh, Data X uh, and what you're likely to learn if you spend some time with it. And uh, we certainly hope that you um, do spend that time 
and that you enjoy your experience with it. All right, thank you.